Alright, here we go. Once again, put this on here. Glasses. Little bit of shady, you know what I mean? Yeah. Got it from the VA. Yeah, I'm actually. Go, please. No, okay. That's the problem with me. Actually, that's the problem. It's a good thing about these days. You gotta prove everything. See? I'm a veteran. See? Like that. I got these for free. Call it socialized medicine. They say I earned it because I served and something happened, but they compensate me when I get my medicine for that. But I got some medicine I have to take right now. But this is not from the VA. I could have got it from the VA, but I had to go down. I'd have to go downtown uh, St. Louis, you know, to the VA here so they could fill the prescription. This is, what this is. This is like a antibiotics because I had a little little surgery, they call it. I like to say surgery. I'm doing a little the hyperbole with that. Is that hyperbole? I don't know. It's big words. I don't like those big words. And I put a video there because I had a little, had a tooth extraction. Oh, man. This tooth. I'm happy. This this thing started in Thailand. Something happened in Thailand. And went there, and then they said that there, they did something up there. Then they wanted to do a root canal. They tried to do a root canal. They couldn't do it. Then they sort of healed it up. Then, it was in, then I was in South Africa, and then... And then they was trying to do some crown, and it turns out the two finally like I don't know died or whatever have you. So when I got here in St. Louis, you know this is like it wasn't started in Thailand in two thousand what two thousand four. <laughs> so this has been a long journey. <laughs> anyway, because of a whole bunch of things, the point is they had to extract the teeth because they extract the bottom one, which was the problem. They had to extract the top one too. So on this side, I'm missing things. So well, somehow you know dentists filled this, figure this stuff out. I'll take the jacket on. Put some. Then we'll take my juice. Mm. Juice with it. Mm. I didn't swallow it. I stood my throat. Now I'm going to swallow it. Just a second. I'm going to hold it. Put this down here. <sighs> okay. Oh, the juice. Beet. Ginger turmeric. It's like it's weird. It's like everything when you get to a certain age, and everything sort of comes on you. Okay, like beet reminds me of back in the day at the African Street Festival. Now I'm saying the African Street. Now they did the International African Arts Festivals and someplace else in Brooklyn. But you used to be the Boys and Girls High High School field there, and that's where you know they had all the good food, whatever you eat. You know, natural food, raw food, whatever. It's there. All the raw food I always ate there. You know. And they had to take the beet, the raw beet, and put it in the sandwich. And da 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 da. I've always ate healthy, you know. So it's beet. So beet reminds me of that, you know. Even though I've heard beets all my life, whatever. It reminds me of that more because it's raw beet. Ginger. Okay, then ginger reminds me. It just reminds me. Ginger, no, it reminds me when I was in. Uh, uh, so let's 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 do the. Um, let's say the the beets is the early nineties, the nineties or eighty nineties, right? That's also actually so. That's when I was doing stained glass, you know, with Bernard White, we we're doing these stained glass things, you know, the pyramids and stuff like that. Like pyramids, oh yeah, like, you know, like pyramids. Um, and we do all kinds of beautiful, these beautiful, like stained glass, you know, images and stuff like that. So, um, uh, so that's that's beats. Ginger then reminds me of when I was living in a vegan house in Washington, D.C., you know. The, the, the house was called Casa de Ajo. This is a unique situation. Like it's a, I don't say it's a squatter house, but, you know, certain people could live there. You know, you lived there for a while, and it was a, a thing where you would you would cook. You would cook. You know, once, you know, we had the schedule. You would cook, right? You cook for the whole house, but you cook and you clean everything like that. Then the next day, that, that. Okay. Now, strangely enough, when I cook, like, the whole, you know, somebody you have to be in the house, whatever. Was, everybody showed up when I cooked. Showed you something, yeah. You know, I could call my grandmother teaching me how. Well, she taught me how to teach me how to cook. She just she cooked, and I just watched her. And then I, along the way, I just learned how to cook. Uh, in fact, back time I had worked for the Sopranos already, whatever have you. So I learned a lot from the Sopranos working uh, craft service for the Sopranos. And then, of course, so that's ginger. That's say say so. Ginger is like the early two thousands, the year two thousand three. But then, of course, then I went to to India for for a few times. But that's where you get the turmeric. Oh man, now I got the I get the turmeric root now. I should run and get that, but I won't now I get the turmeric root now. I get the turmeric powder, I put that in everything. But I get the turmeric root. And so I've been doing it. It's just like it looks like ginger. It's just like carrot. But you know, it really stains your, your fingers. So now I'm gonna have to put on them rubber gloves, I think. 
uh, what, what the heck? I could I let it absorb into my skin anyway. And then I chopped it up. I made this thing the other night where I had garlic, chopped garlic, ginger, and turmeric, right? Like a little, little, and fried it in some, um, low fried it in some, uh, um, uh, what do you call that? Ghee, ghee butter. Because, you know, the ghee, you can fry it at a higher, there, I made the ghee, right? Then I had the sweet potato because I couldn't eat whatever. So I had the sweet potato I was baking for a long time. Baked that sucker for about <laughs> an hour and a half of it for a long time, right? And um, then instead of putting sour cream, well, wait a minute, forget sour cream. So it, when it was the old, it was the, uh, make, make, it was more like a yam than a sweet potato. You know, it's not, when I think of sweet potato, I think of it as the, you know, they call it the Japanese sweet potato. It's the white sweet potato. It's a sweet potato and it's got white, the white one. I, think, I really like that one. But this one is the, uh, it's like the southern yam, you know, the orange kind of like the turmeric color, right? So I did that, right? Then I took this thing. Then I said, man, I got to put this with something. Do that, do, do, do something. This is where you start thinking, you know, it's how, it's how you cook. Preparation is everything. You're preparing, right? So what I did is I took avocado. I mashed the avocado up, put the, the you know, the, the turmeric, ginger, garlic, you know, in, in make a Lego thing like that, and sort of stuff the, the um, sweet potato with that. No, we, you think of it as sweet potato when you have a sweet potato and give it to the restaurant, they had sweet potato, they had the sour cream on it, then they had the little chives like that. But this was like, instead of chives, they had it there, instead of sour cream, they had, had avocado. Anyway, it was really good. I bring out the one thing because this is like a weekend review. I've been thinking lately. I know. Mm. And everything you realize at some particular point, see, I'm going to oh, look. Bless 70, whatever it says there. Bless, bless by God. Se Blessed by God, 70 years. I'm in my, I just entered my seven, seventh decade, is the way I like to say it right now. But, you know, you, you think a whole bunch of things, you know, like, like, for instance, I'm wearing pants. Now, I don't have to, I have a belt on, right? Okay, now, here's the interesting thing, thing, thing with the belt, uh, like, it's in the service, right? There's a thing, I guess, in the, well, you have, in, well, in the service, they call it a gig line. No, a gig line is where basically your I guess yeah, I could create is basically where your 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 belt buckle, right? And you see this thing right here? It lines up with your with your your, your thing in your pants. And if you have a shirt, the shirt lines up with that. So it's one straight line. That's how you that's how you wear it. But belts to me, ah, I can wear them or not wear them. I wear them because I wear them. But in the in a closer culture, right, in South Africa where I live now, right, men wear belts. You gotta wear a belt. <laughs> it's just like men wear hats too, but they're not that wallet. But you know, there's certain things in, in certain cultures. So all this stuff reminds you of stuff. And then, you know, of course, with the gig line that I reminded that, you know, oh, don't knock it. I reminded that, hey, it's in the Air Force. I showed you the thing right in there. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, so I'm being redundant there. Sorry about that. It reminds you of that. Then you, all kinds of things, you know, like I, I like this. Um, I'm at my best friend's house now. Uh, I've known him since 72, 70, whatever, for a long time. And he's, he's throughout the years, he's, he, he's had so many households, but he has, you know, he's, uh, he's a boomer. He's a boomer for real. I'm a boomer for, out, I'm an outlier. I'm an outlier boomer. So I'm not like, I'm a boomer for real, but I'm an outlier boomer, which means I didn't collect no nothing. You know, money's no nothing like that, right? Just experiences, right? So, so it's like, for instance, like here, this is my grand nephew here, right? But interestingly enough, he makes this fist automatically. So this reminds me of the Black Power days, you see? He's like, uh, no, he's like a year and a half now. Yeah, yeah, a year and a half. A um, little bit less than a year and a half. So I like that every time I move around to a different space in this space when I'm doing I carry the picture with me. But then you look here, you know, I got this book, Trouble in Mind, right? Black Southerners in the Age of Jim Crow. So you have all these images. Of, of black people from the south, right? Now, of course, my my lineage comes from the south too, at least on my on my maternal side. You know, my uh, great grandfather, my great grandfather, great grandfather was 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 um, Gullah. And my great grandmother, but on the maternal side, was uh, was Geechee. <laughs> my great grandfather's Gullah Geechee, whatever you want to say that from South Carolina, you know the thing. And but, but my great grandmother was a uh, Mohawk Indian, right? So you had that. But this reminds me of that, like that. Then if you, this is an interesting bookshelf here. Um, if you notice, for instance, okay. <laughs> it said, what that boy got that Nazi sign there? Now that takes my brain someplace else, right? 
Because when I was traveling to India, I, I, I was once this place, I forgot what it was called. It, 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 Himalayan mountains. I didn't, when I traveled, I traveled with no money. I had no money, whatever. But I could go to the cheapest place. So I was up some out of the way place, you know. It's just basically one big room. I don't know what the, what the thing was. It's almost like a store. I don't want to say storage, but it's just a, a space, right? Um, and, and this thing was a big, it looked like a SWAT sticker, right? You know, I mean, but. It's like reverse. So in other words, if you had a mirror image of this, it would be reversed. So in India, that is that had been but before the Nazis came. It was um, a thing of peace. It's a sign of peace, basically. It's to say it's a sign of peace. But of course, Hitler comes on, perverts it, and becomes a sign now it's associated with evil. Now, as history goes on, hopefully, you know, the Nazis will be washed away because even in, in Germany, they don't really deal with, with Nazis, and I guess they don't. I mean, the Americans have taken it up. Let me go back to this, what I'm saying here. So, no, let me explain. So, Americans have taken, neo Nazis have taken this over, right? What they don't understand, if a neo Nazi, from and usually you associate neo Nazi, or even Europe, sure, but with America a lot, right? So, these guys are swat sticking themselves in the, you know, tattoos or whatever it is. Um, but what they don't understand, because again, you know, when you travel, when I, re I read a lot of whatever happened, there's certain things, you learn certain things. So, there's this uh, new book out, uh, Cass, and when she realized I'm, see, a lot of the stuff people come up with now, I've known before, I just, I'm not writing like that, you know? So what happens is that is that neo-Nazis, the Nazis got a lot of their stuff from Jim Crow. <laughs> they studied, you know, Hitler, they sent teams over and they studied the American uh, apartheid or whatever, American Jim Crow. So a lot of their ideas that for Nazism comes from Jim Crow. So now you take this stuff where they're reversing the Indian stuff, right? One and and the other, and they're studying Jim Crow, American Jim Crow, and a lot of that stuff. Uh, well, I won't get into that right now. So they take and they they flip all this stuff, or they use all this stuff. So and in fact, in fact, what's happening? Nazism or or American, whatever they they call so they're almost like a mission. They're the imitation of an imitation. They don't understand this is layers. This is kind of interesting, right? So so. So what I'm trying to say, these people are totally, uh, um, how you say, European, I'd say European mentality. Well, I would say the Anglo uh, racist white supremacy mentality. The problem is that they're wholly unoriginal. All they do is take stuff and they edit it or, or come up with it. Like, for instance, I was traveling a lot, you know, through Central America and, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, even in Brazil, like they have these, all these gold things like that. Well, you have the churches, especially the Catholics. <sighs> You know, what they used to do, they, they, they would go to an area and say, if that was a sacred spot, people go there for worship or whatever, worshiping their ancestors, whatever have you. They would then take and put their church over that sacred spot. Oh, they're devious, those, you know, those people from the north, those barbarians, they're devious, right? I got in trouble one time because I was in, uh, way up there with Cree Indians, way up there in, in, in Canada, you know, Quebec. Province, whatever, all the way up there, you know, where the geese fly home and stuff like that. <laughs> and there was some, uh, I think it's not Holland, yeah, ne Netherlands, some, I mean, so some other people were there, some the doctors or whatever were there, and I was doing a workshop, right? So we got to talking about that, and something was happening with the princess or the queen and that thing, and said, I said, ah, and I said, wait, how did they become blue bloods anyway? And you'll call these people blue bloods. I mean, I know it's supposed to be from, you know, because there's such pale skin that, you know, you you can see the blue veins or the, the veins in there. Like, maybe that's what it is. I said, but what? It's like, one at one moment, they're like barbarians. They're like, you know, they're whores. They're, 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 then all of a sudden, they make themselves blue bloods. I said, oh, those people got mad. I'm talking about the, the, the doc, whatever that came from. There. They was like mad at me, right? Hey, but the truth is the truth. Anyway, so that was, yeah, that was uh, where the geese fly home. That was way up to Canada. See, Canada here, way up there. Oh, man, it was something. I'm going to Canada pretty soon. I'm going to take a train trip across from Vancouver to Toronto. Um, so I'm thinking that, but then you go to all kinds of things, like, the, oh, not only that symbol, like, say the symbol of, of and they always they always pervert the symbols. Like, um, let's say the Ankh. Okay, it's a famous... Uh, it's an Egypt, Egypt book up there, whatever. I mean, say the Ankh, you know what I mean? You know how the Ankh looks here. The thing is, is like, they, you can use it more of a staff, you know, a symbol like that. But, you know, they, they take the Ankh and pervert, pervert it, or they change it to a cross, you know. The cross, what it is, that's really a sword. And it's a male thing, you know. You know, the father, the son, father, son, 
Wait, uh, yeah, when we do the Catholic thing, you know, um, uh, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Yeah, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, right? And so that's a whole male thing. Dare I say it, kind of, you know, it's kind of gay if you look at it, you know. But the Ankh is a symbol of, of, of basic, it's a, it's a feminine thing with the male, the male, woman, man, woman, woman, child. So it's a more complete thing. So, you know, those kind of things, I, I think about those things, not I think about those things, but because I've been exposed to those, those things happen. Let me keep on going with this stuff. This is kind of interesting to me now. Um, like when I'm traveling, like give, give, give me an idea. When I travel, I used to like go to an area and have a book. I see there's a book James mentioned is uh, Mexico, but it was another book I read when I went first went to Mexico. It was like a thing called the Aztecs or something like that. One of these big historical novels. I love historical novels, right? But then I see this book I have uh, James Mitchell up there, uh, the Covenant. When I went to South Africa, the Covenant is pretty good. Don't get me wrong, it's pretty good. It give you a nice history, of whatever. Have you. There's some missing things that I found. Not missing things. Some interpretations because he talked to the people of the day. That was kind of interesting, but I got more deep into like, like, like the whole, uh, uh, the whole uh, thing where the, the little girl tells her uncle, whatever, and then it close up burn the cattle only because it's this whole thing where this, this uh, white man knew the, sort of knew the language. And so he, he was up in this, this cavern, whatever have you, and his reflection reflected down on the water. He was white and just have this reflection. And he's because of the cavern, he says, in Fosa, he says, you know, you know, burn the cattle or whatever. So this little girl goes back to the uncle, tells it, and for whatever reason, I don't know, you know, the uncle listens to it, the uncle is the right-hand person to the king, and then they burn the cattle, and it's a whole other thing happens. They still haven't recovered from that psychological. But he is, I mean, here's an interesting thing. This book out here. The interesting thing about books, they have all these modern books, and they try to update it, but they don't have enough thing. This is a big book, The American Presidents. Now here, two thing. Excuse me, this, this is going to lead someplace, I think, right? American presidents. So they have it in order for George Washington all the way down, you know, to the day end of Bill, Bill Clinton, right? So I look at now, how is this book useful to me, you know? Because, first of all, the president, this this day and age, the president, that I wouldn't say, yeah, I would say hate. <laughs> hate the most. This cow is, that, is Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson is basically Donald Trump. Okay, corporatist, you know, racist, and I could I shouldn't say racist. I don't like racist. Yeah, white, white supremacist. You know, he did all kinds of things. He's a terrible, terrible person. And what did he look like? This is they have these portraits. This is this is the boy right here. When, you know, southern boy. This one right here. This that's this that's, that's the Wilson. He's in charge of a print. They put him in charge of Princeton University, right? Oh, by, by the way, the guy that. You know, my friend here, that's why I met him. I met him at Princeton. These things come together, Princeton University. This is when we did a radio program. You know, he, he was going to Princeton. And uh, I was in the Air Force at the time. And stuff, certain stuff happened. And we, he was doing this radio program uh, Saturday. So, JB, do I have the... I guess that's in the other room. I'll show it sometime. And uh, maybe I should go get it. Um, so, I saw with JB. And uh, what's historical about that, that was like 71, 72. 72, we did that program. But it's, think of it like... Um, I guess you have this NPR, NPR program. You have this um, um, program, Felix Hernandez, the soul kind of thing. Well, think about it. This is 72. We're doing a better program. than we like the pioneers. I've been a pioneer with everything. Like, it's a, it was an amazing program. Saturday's over JB. Whenever I actually get the thing. Anyway, the, go back to Woodrow Wilson. So I look at that. Then I'm trying to figure out. Now, what's interesting about a book like this, because it's published, it goes to Bill Clinton. When was it? When was this come out? Uh, sorry to take so long. No, I'm sorry. To take, this is call this a weekend review or some some review. Uh, a five four rights reserve seventy three. What is this? It'll be later than that. When is this? Copyright nineteen eighty nine. They have Bill Clinton in there, so it's got to be. It's uh, only copyright I see. Uh, four rights reserve. Somebody, somebody graphics. Copyright in 1989. Oh, why do I have that? It's got to be something there. 92. 1992. Yeah, copyright. Oh, White House Bill Clinton. I guess 92. Maybe this book came out in 92, right? But I look I look up, say, well, do, well I look at these things. Uh, leading cabinet officials. They have all these things in the appendix. They have leading cab cabinet officials. All this stuff like that. Uh, Congress that was... Uh, uh, who was in Congress. Order of Congress. Well, here's 
would apply to today. Let me try to find this page here. Uh, uh, key facts about presidents, you know, birthplace and all the rest of that stuff. Um, key facts about presidents. Let's see. Uh, vice presidents in there. Presidential elections. Oh, here. This is interesting. Okay. Now, I go to my little Woodrow Wilson thing. This is... Here. Now, if you're going to do research, this is a great book. Like, say, for instance, let me go to... Since I went to Theodore Roosevelt High School, let's start with Theodore Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt, you know, Rough Riders. They were black. I told this guy the other day, they, they, you know, his Rough Riders are black. You know, black troops. Are, yeah, black people, they're always around, you know? Um, he was elect when he was elected in uh, says uh, 1904, right? Uh, he got the percentage of popular vote. They had the actual numbers when he was elected. He said he had 56.4 percent of the popular vote. He had 336, 336 electoral votes. Okay, let's keep on going. Taft had uh, let's just electoral votes. Taft had uh, 400. I mean 300. Uh, 21 electoral votes, right? Woodrow Wilson, 435 electoral votes. That's pretty high. Whoa. That's the highest. Except for, except for five, we have Franklin Delano Roosevelt in 1936 had 523, but 435, that means that a whole lot of people were into this racist guy, right? He had 41% of the popular, 41.9%, to say 42% of the popular vote. So when I look at these numbers right here, they have Warren, Warren Harding had 404 electoral votes. But he had, woo, he had, Warren Harding had 60.4% of the popular vote. So when you look at this racist, Woodrow Wilson, they'll say, wait a second, what was happening in 19, what, 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 what happened in 1912 that people, that at least, the, 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 let's, let's call the electoral uh, votes the 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 establishment, you know, the the the, the electoral college, you know, the Senate, the, the, the big boys like that, the the populist, this the people votes. Well, look, Herbert Hoover got fifty eight point two percent of the popular vote. That's interesting, like that. But what was happening? In other words, they love this racist. I'm just saying. So like, like, books like that, you know. All right, let me put this down here. Put this right there, like that. What's happening these days, which which impresses me, right? Oh, talk about books. Oh, look at this book here. Sorry, I have to throw this out here. Because um, um, I'm here. It's an all-male house now. You know, but JB, his son is here, and his and his son sometimes has his, his son there. You know what I mean? And uh, his son's birthday is going to be the 22nd of this month. So I'm going to give him the same uh, uh, present, same book that I gave. I give out books. I don't be doing this toy thing, whatever have you. That I gave to my grand nephew, which is this book here, right? It's for kids, of course, he's too young. One well, maybe too young for it. And as you you may see, this book here it has a it has a song, whatever have you. It's done by Pete Seeger, right? But what the important thing about this book you have to understand is that see that figure there, and like that that cat there, you know, the model for this thing. Let's see that model. That's me. <laughs> yes, me. I used to model. Uh, 80s, from 80 to 88, 1988, put a whole, whatever. So I, um, um, the, the artist with that, he used me as a model because P.T. was putting out this thing. Da, da, da. So I'm immortal somehow, you know. Um, what, was I, what was I talking about? So these sort of things come together, and I realized there was something that was said. I listened to this uh, radio this well, this broadcast. That I'm, I'm thinking is that what's happening now is you have uh, what I explained on my, my Instagram. I do these little little things, but only in my this YouTube I can get to expand a little bit because I, these are my rants. You shouldn't even be listening to this. Either. My, my my interview problems are, are the best. But I have this thing because my degree is undergraduate degree in and my is in communication, everything in communication. But one of the interns I have, internships I have when I was taking extension courses for Trent State College is um, I was at the Trent newspaper. And uh, and I, I couldn't spell. I'm a terrible speller. But I went to this guy, guy in the newsroom. I said, well, "How do you spell so, so, so? He says, "I may know how to know that know how to spell it, but I know where to find out." And he reached behind him and got a dictionary, and we went through it together. You know, taught me a lot like that. All I'm trying to say is that there's references all around. Well, in this house, there's references. Now, this is one of my one of my realities. I go into another reality with something else, another reality, another reality, another reality. I get like four or five different sets here, like that. And and your your references are very important. 
Um, but I'm saying in this day and age, it's really interesting to me because you have certain YouTube personalities, well, personalities or, or people, uh, or channels or nodes uh, that they, they may have a following anywhere from, say, 50,000 to maybe a half a million. And so a lot of them is popular, like celebrities and what I've had. But then when you have your real, um, uh, your, your political people, it's super interesting because usually that's your more serious people. And then they go around and they, and it's almost like um, th there's this thing in communications, like it's called a, f a, f a fork. It's like that. So if you think of a fork like that, and so this is the stem. So you might have the, the sources here, right? And then the, the source sort of gives out information to these other these other the other people and these people become the source put them over here and they they it goes out like a branch like like a tree you know like that but this source is really they do the they do the homework that's really accurate this may be a little bit less accurate but they get a lot of information but it also flows the other way this source is getting stuff from all other other places you know coming to to nourish this source right so uh, so you may have some uh, let's deal with ados because that's my political head right now. You know, I just still do with ADUS. Now, so like, uh, uh, they're, they're, you know, they do the American flag thing, you know, it's the American flag thing. Because we're the American, we're American descendants of slavery, or like I like to say, North American descendants of chattel slavery, you know. So that's our political head. That's, that's a good identifier. There's two things to this. There's your identification, Right, and then there's what what we call your, your your movement, the movement, if you want to call it that. Your identification is your reality, right? And then you know, there's a lot of people have problems with ADS, well, mainly because of certain things, right? Like like like, well, I'll just say it, you know, the progenitors of ADS, they're hard, which I love, you know what I mean? So they they'll reject the uh, the the well, this is a updated black, you know. It's called the red, black, and green. For not, not, the Marcus Garvey has the red, the black, the green. You know the red, the red for the blood, the black for the race, and the green for the vegetation of the land, whatever for the land like that. And then, then, the, then, the, then the, uh, the Jamaican or the Rastas have this whole thing with the gold, you know, for the, the riches, whatever it is. But I love this particular flag. You know? So, so in other words, it's almost like my body is that in my head. Well, I'm, I'm American, you know. So, and I use the America or the, the movement for ADOS. You have to be you have to be American because because then you go your, your your reparations you know if you will, or your, your reparative justice has to come from America which did did the injustice to you you see so so the American flag is not going to recognize but it's really arrogant you know they're, they're not going to recognize any other flag you come there with a neo Nazi flag or a Trump flag or whatever it is or you know whatever flag you come with you know the Belizean flag or whatever it is they say, what the heck's that you know, but the, how but the flag can't go against itself. That would make no sense, you know. So all these people that would want to reject the American flag for whatever reason, I insist it really come from the white boys. When I say the white boys, I mean they, with the anti um, the anti war movement. Those are the ones that started burning the flag and all the rest of that stuff. They're the ones that really did that, you know. To be before them, because the civil rights movement, they were wrapped in the American flag, you know. So that was something, you know, that that I don't know, whatever. Uh, and plus, you know, the 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 the, the, uh, the what do you call it? The, the nationalists, you know, the Pan Africanists, they feel some way about the American flag because it's it's subjugated all this thing. Even though it's still doing it, I don't know. They haven't done anything about that, you know, because you know you, you get Africom, you get all these people still in in, in, in these um, in African countries or whatever have you subjugating in, in, with with the American military subjugating these people, and they don't know how to do. Then what are they going to do? What, what are you going to come at them with? The most logical thing is say, "Hey, ADOS, let's support that because you know if they go after the if they go after reparative justice and reparations, that means they take money away from their military. This this doing anything? I'm not going to get the logic with that. And a lot of people say, "Yeah, but you know our, you're disrespecting our ancestors. You know our ancestors this it, it, it. But let's go like let's listen to a broadcast this morning. I'm not going to say who because I don't want to get nobody mad at me. I'm just going to be." He said, you know, even even Tupac was saying that. I say this too. And, and ADO said the same thing. You know, my generation, you know, when I say my generation, not me specifically, because I'm working, you know what I mean? When I say I'm working for liberation, you know what I mean? Y'all didn't do the job. The reason why we're still dealing with police brutality right now because you didn't get rid of them racist cops. You, you know what I'm saying? You didn't, you didn't, you didn't really deal with the, the, the American, the American part of, you, of the American thing. So, so in other words, every generation has to keep on fighting the same battle because the generation before them didn't do what they were supposed to do. So all these people talking about, no, you got to respect our ancestors who went before us. Whatever. No, there's one person said there's your elders and then there's the oldest. 
I insist that I insist this is me. And I'm speaking as a as a boomer with that who didn't who didn't do the job. Okay, not that I didn't try, and I'm keep on trying. I'm saying that yeah. So don't tell me about you know this organization here has been doing that, and this organization has been doing this, whatever have you. We know a lot of these organizations when they started, they were influenced, but they always had white people in organizations. What killed what what, what killed uh, the 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 original the the, the Pan African move from the, from the beginning. We told Marcus Garvey from the beginning. They had an infiltration from the FBI, you know, like that. They had white boys on in, involved in the thing, you know. It's one, you know, or people passing whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, white, you know, the treasure, whatever. You know, of course, the whole NAACP was basically started by white people. You know what I mean? The, the we're going to the all these organizations, whatever have you. Interestingly enough, ADOS. Ain't started by it. There's no, there's no white in there. This kind of, you can have allies, but you can't have, you know, because we have, you know, we have Professor Darity and his wife, and then you have, you know, Tone and the, and Yvette. So it's kind of interesting to me, like on that level. We say no, but this organization, you know, but these organizations that have been doing this work, this Pan African work or whatever, had for reparations. They weren't pure ADOS. Their reparations has to do with a whole bunch of other things, diluting the power. They have no. They're not fighting against the American. Well, maybe they are fighting against the American flag. Well, we're not fighting. We are the American flag. See, you have to get, anyway. But they, because you have to respect the elders, the people that went before. You know, you don't because they didn't do the job. Okay, respect them. You know, the ancestors. Okay, yeah, but not every ancestor. But I learned to South Africa, especially when you use elders. Not not every elder is an elder. So you know, if you just because you seventy years old, but if you've been a drunk all your life, what kind of seventy year old are you? You see what I'm saying? So my, I'm, I'm waxing going. I'm sorry, but I, I got to get all this stuff out of my system, right? Because this has been a week, interesting week to me. Um, I'm going like, you know, so do, do, don't give me this ancestor business. Don't give me this elder business. You know, I want to know results. What's the battle right now, and how are you addressing it? Don't you see? You see, but all these people doing this way. No, no, they, 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 they haven't. Any organization has come before. And you haven't, you haven't, well, we had an impact, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, I've been working in this organization for 20 years. I got Nancy Pelosi on speed dial. I can talk to the, the pfft, so you're talking to Nancy Pelosi, ain't going to help nobody. You're talking to the middle bit, you know, oh, but the, the politicians, been doing, the same politicians ain't did nothing. Well, but this, it, this, this, this organization and this reverend and whatever have you, they, again, in the way. <laughs> But what, let me go back to the point where I was saying. So we have this situation. We have a lot of, uh, of, of, of let's say, respected YouTubers. I'm say YouTubers, but you know, social media people that that they're being they're being fed with information. You know what I mean? That's making us stronger and slow and steady wins the race. So I'm very. I mean, I'm I'm ecstatic at what's going on right now. You know. The, and then here's the other thing. You know. I didn't even get to Bitcoin and what is happening with that, and that's a, that's a whole talk about Pan African. That's a whole that's that that's the Pan African new Pan African movement is is Bitcoin. Okay, they say cryptocurrency. I'm just saying straight up, it's going to be Bitcoin. It's okay, forget Bitcoin. It's blockchain. Blockchain is the only thing that's going to address this. So if you're a Pan Africanist and you're not into blockchain, you ain't got to the next level. You still stuck in your fantasies and your, you know, the longings for the struggle that you keep on struggling in. Yeah, but I've been struggling here so long. <laughs> That's the point. You're still stuck there. <laughs> you can't go forward because you're still back there. It's no better than being, say, uh, talking about Christian sin, than being a Christian. What these fundamental Christians are well, just like Christ. Oh, so you're living 2,000 years ago. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, Paul and, and and well, Paul persecuted Christ. Yeah, but yeah, he's he's what, what you didn't persecute Christians. He was persecuting the call the way. The, the or before the Christianity had been called the way. I won't get to it. But the point is, I know you don't know. You know, because everybody feigns ignorance or they they have selective memories. I said selective memory too because I'm an old guy. I have selected what I want to do. So I'm I'm saying all this to say this. We're informed by what we're informed by worldwide. You know, unless you've been, let me put it this way, you can get your book knowledge, that's one thing. But then you have to get on the ground knowledge. You know, I've been involved in a lot of organizations from the beginning. You know, everybody talk about, say, say the reparations or whatever it is. Well, oh, Queen, uh, Queen Mother Moore, yeah, I hung out with Queen Mother Moore. Oh, Dr. Sebi, oh, please, I know Dr. Sebi, but I know before Dr. Sebi, there's, you know, there's, there's uh, Dr. Johnny Moore. I hung out with Johnny, John Moore. Oh, wait, politics, you know. 
Yes, I was hanging with David Dingers and Danny Farrell and the whole Raymond J, whoever Jones Club there. All them people. I'm attached. That's how I'm formed. I'm formed not only by books, but by actual experience and talking to people. Okay? I mean, not. Not only that interaction with 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 a moment with Mary Baraka, Mary Baraka, you know, but also you know when he Leroy Jones and his first wife, <laughs> those kind of things, you know what I mean? You know, even the beats, the the the, the black guy that that came up with the beat generation, he was a black guy, right? I forgot that brother's name. Anyway, all the stuff, you know what I mean? There are there are some of us under the radar, the 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 the. the the ceiling like that, you know, Ed, that we know a lot of stuff. And we are the ones that are informing in a little old way these other these other folks. You know what I mean? You talk about, well, you know, how about Lumumba? Yeah. John Stockwell. <laughs> that recording. Yeah, I know what John Stockwell then did. Have have had Lumumba in the back of his car. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, uh, Kenyatta. Yeah, now they're doing no key uh uh Joma Kenyatta. But you know his son who was raising thing, he's he's he's, he's he, in Kenya right now, he's like, please, not doing anything. You know what I mean? He loves the French, you know. <laughs> it's all these people, you know their lineage. You can't romanticize about things. But that's what I love about uh, a lot of the stuff that people do. Somebody, some people do it in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way that's sort of offensive to other people. But I look at it and say, hey, information. I'm looking at the information, not how they're delivering it. You see? And that's what we have to get over. We got to get over, you know, well, this is a nice guy. I've known him. I have a relationship with him. I'm a really good guy. Yeah, fine. What's your information? What are you saying? Oh, you know, you see? Okay, you understand what I'm saying. I've been long-winded, but I had to get it all out because it's like, it's interesting how we are informed, but we're not informed. We have, uh, we're, we're informed, like I say, in an emotional level because you sat with this person where you did with that person, you know what I mean? This person I said, but I don't agree with it at all. I'll hang out with them, you know. What the hey? Okay. More on another time. Sorry to talk so long. Actually, I'm not sorry because I did talk so long. You'll take it easy. Just a little message from me, T, from the Patterson's taking the train to Tibet. Loving that we're in this particular moment so we can tell you things that we only suspect but you can suss out for yourself through books, through talking to elders, a bunch of ways you can get. Okay, talk to you later.